Hey folks, sorry I'm uploading these videos at a snail's pace, but anyway, I've gotten multiple requests to go into a little bit more detail on how I did this mod. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Stick around. So starting at the bottom here, we're going to remove all these screws. Now keep track of where they came from. Toward the rear, there's going to be three short silver screws. In the middle, there's going to be three long black screws. And all the rest of the screws on the, on the bottom are going to be the same. There's 11 short black screws. Now we're going to lift the top panel, but be mindful of these ribbon cables. You might want to mark the connectors so you don't mix them up. Just squeeze the tabs and they lift right out. We'll go ahead and remove this ground screw and detach the black ground wire. After I removed the wire, I went ahead and put the screw right back so I don't lose it or lose where it came from. Now you can set the keyboard section off to the side. Everything we're after now is in the top panel. So there will be more small black screws, the same as the 11 from the bottom. Uh, remove this metal, this metal U-shaped channel here. It has these little bendy cable management ties. You can just uncoil those and uh, get them right out of the way and this metal channel comes right out. Now you want to remove all the knobs, nuts, washers, and slider caps from the front panel. And go ahead and remove all the screws securing the motherboard. Uh, they're this, again, they're the same small black screws as before. Be careful handling the motherboard because it is quite flexible and fragile. Now this may look like a potentiometer, but it's actually a rotary switch. This is the voice selector knob. Locate the lug that goes to the toy piano voice. The lug that I've soldered the red wire to is the lug we want. So you'll want to desolder that lug on the underside using your preferred desoldering method. Uh, personally, I use one of those spring-loaded solder suckers. 
you'll probably want to carefully bend that terminal and remove it from the hole in the PCB or carefully snip off the part that goes through the hole as long as you leave enough to solder to on the top side. The point is you don't want that pin from the rotary switch connected to the pad on the PCB. If you don't care about the toy piano sound at all, then you can stop right here. You're done. Go ahead and put it right back together. At that point, anytime you select the toy piano on the rotary switch and power the unit on, you will actually get the acoustic piano sound instead. If you still want to be able to access the toy piano sound, you'll want to reconnect that lug, but with a switch in between. I had a single pull, single throw switch laying around, so that's what I did. There happened to be a convenient hole in the board which I ran a wire through. All we're doing is soldering the pad on the PCB to one side of the switch and soldering the pin from the rotary switch to the other side of the switch. Now these are your LED indicators on the front. And these are empty LED sockets used as standoffs or spacers to help support the board against the front panel. I removed this one by squeezing the little tabs and it popped right out, revealing the hole I ran the wire through. You can take whatever path is most convenient for you to run, to run a wire through. Back to the front panel, I drilled this hole for the switch. I took a straight edge across the center of all the holes for the knobs, and I marked and drilled right where the spacer was underneath. There's not a lot of depth between the inside of the front panel and the surface of the PCB. The switch just barely fits, and it's right to the deck. Now reinstall the PCB, taking care not to miss any screws. Don't over tighten as you are screwing into plastic. Plus, you don't want to crack the PCB. Reinstall the metal U channel. Slip the little cable ties underneath the ribbon cables. Bend those little cable ties back around the cables. Okay, remember this ground screw? Go ahead and reattach the ground wire. Now you want to catch the edge of the panel right here and, and reconnect those cables there. Now carefully guide everything back into place. Okay, we're getting ready to put the screws back in the bottom. Now stop here and look at your pile of the small black screws. If you have more than 11, that means you missed something on the inside. I actually missed one myself when I was filming this. Apparently, I had actually removed the one that didn't need to be removed uh, to get the PCB out, and I forgot to put it back. So if you missed any screws, no biggie. Go back, take your time, and meet me back here. The three long black screws go in the middle. The three silver screws go in the rear toward the output jacks and all the rest go everywhere else. Alright, replace all the washers, nuts, knobs, slider caps, for the washers, make sure the nice side is facing up. Very 
Snug up those nuts, but don't over tighten. The knob without the indicator goes on the voice selector, and all the rest of the knobs have indicators. With our new switch in the on position, everything functions as before. If you care about which direction the switch faces in the on position or the off position, then you'll want to make sure the switch is oriented the way you want before putting it all back together. With the knob in the toy position and our switch turned off, turning the reface off and back on will access the grand piano sound by default. The, L the LED indicator will say it's in the Rhodes setting, but in fact it'll be the grand piano. Anytime you switch to a different voice, you'll no longer be able to access the grand piano again unless you turn off the reface and turn it back on. Turning the selector to the toy piano position and then turning off your switch will not access the toy piano sound. The switch has to be in the off position and the rotary switch on the toy piano setting before turning on the reface. If you're currently on the grand piano setting and you turn your switch off, it'll immediately bring you back to the toy piano setting. Now there are plenty of ways to do mods like this for the to access the grand piano sound more conveniently, and you don't have to put your you don't have to put your switch where I did. Um, I've seen a lot of people put the switch on the left side on the black plastic, wherever you can find room. Um, I just thought it kind of looked nice where I put it because it lines up with the rest of the switches and the switch that I used is the same form factor so it kinda looks like it matches and it belongs there sort of so that's what I did um, but put the switch wherever you can fit you know as long as you have enough wire to reach wherever you're going um, and again if you don't care about the toy piano sound at all then you don't even have to bother putting in a switch you can just desolder the connection to the toy piano sound and put it back together. So I hope this video helped. I'm, I, I'm sorry I'm not very good at explaining things here, but uh, I hope this video helps. And if you still need any clarification on anything, please feel free to ask. I'm absolutely happy to help. And uh, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting on this channel, on my videos, and all the constructive criticism, and all the requests and ideas for other videos. Again, I'm sorry I'm uploading at a snail's pace here. Um, but I have gotten a lot of really good ideas from viewers. I have some videos in the works. It's just taking me a long time to do it. But thanks again for your patience. Thanks again for all your kind words and comments and feedback. And I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Um, I hope everybody has a great Christmas. And uh, thanks for watching.